Happy Thursday, everybody. It's Jim. It's Amadeus. And, uh, well, we're winding down, Amadeus, um, with regard to both the regular season in the NHL and the uh, beginnings. We've already began the playoffs in the NBA. And so, uh, so it goes. Um, tonight we have a game, and you were mentioning it in the pre-show, that uh, – actually does have meaning and those are uh, the Kings playing their game and the Golden Knights playing theirs for seeding uh, hopefully to land that number three spot yeah they're both already clinched but pretty much the the Kings are one point behind the Golden Knights so it's just a matter of who's gonna get that third spot in the division and I believe they would face the Oilers and then who's gonna get that wild card spot so um, if, if the Kings win and the Golden Knights lose, then you know the Kings will get that third spot. If the Golden Knights win, or I think even if they just get a point, they they should be uh, it good in that third place spot. So we'll see what happens. But other than that, yeah, the games are pretty meaningless tonight in the NHL. So there you go. Um, you know, we both have m- many friends in the, in the Las Vegas area, and I- I'm really pleased to see how well. The Golden Knights have been, you know, um, embraced by the community from day one. Oh, yeah. They definitely get behind their team. So uh, no one's questioning the the Vegas fan base for sure. Now, I don't know if they're going to support the A's in the same way, but uh, definitely, you know, they, they've definitely gotten behind this hockey team. Well, we've basically, I mean, we called it. We, It's going to be the Sacramento A's. I mean, I... I don't think they're leaving Northern California, but, uh, but I mean, it's, it's a a whole different thing, a whole different vibe with, with the hockey. They did a really good job of selling the concept before they actually brought the team. And, you know, and doesn't hurt to make it to the Stanley cup playoffs. I'm sorry, Stanley cup finals in your uh, first season. Yeah, definitely. They've, uh, you know, they've been, they've been great since they came into the league. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, pretty much in the playoffs every year. Obviously, they're the defending champions, so mm-hmm. definitely, it's uh, it's it's worked out there for sure. Not like yeah. Arizona, but it's definitely worked out in Vegas, and uh, we'll see if if the Coyotes will work out in Salt Lake. I'm sure. Well, I'll tell you what, I know that the Salt Lake, you know, the entire state of Utah is a great sports, you know, um, area, and and I really do think that they will embrace the hockey team. They've embraced the basketball team. Of course, the Jazz have been there for many, many years. They've also embraced uh, quite um, happily um, the uh, the soccer team out there. So, you know, they they like sports. They like the college sports. They like the pro sports. So I, I do, I think, that the move to uh, Salt Lake for the Coyotes is um, is really a very good move. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, and it's one of those things where, you know, they don't have many sports teams, so they tend to get behind the ones they uh-huh. have. Like you mentioned, they really just have the NBA team, and they're more of a more of a college, you know, mm-hmm. town. And, and now they have the MLS team. They've, they've really gotten behind that. So, mm-hmm. yeah, if you bring a hockey team in there, I'm sure it'll do well. Same with the, a, an MLB team. So it, it's going to be mm-hmm. very interesting to see. They could they could end up getting, you know, two teams in two different sports in the, in the next five years. You never know. I mean, I, I wouldn't mark it off the calendar. And the thing, too, is that the people up there are, are really um, – they do – they do like to support their teams and you know, they buy the merch and they're very heavily involved. And, and frankly, there's a lot of, of area around there. Um, people driving even, you know, over from neighboring States, uh, you know, to watch the jazz play. And uh, it's real, you know, you, you find that wherever people, you know, in, in a market the size of Salt Lake, if you have an NBA team and an NHL team, it really they feed off of each other, and so I think that's um, that's going to be a, a a good help. I mean, part of the problem with the Coyotes in you know, and there were many problems with the Coyotes, but part of the problem with the Coyotes is they never wanted to 
um, share an arena with the, the Phoenix Suns. And I always thought that was the stupidest thing that I could think of. And trust me, you look at what the Panthers and the Heat have done, and, and the Panthers have suffered di- you know, drastically from not, you know, from not being in the same building with the Heat. So uh, you may have your own building, but it's not necessarily – you may be making more money off the concerts that you're doing than actually, you know, having, uh, you know, playing the games. Yeah, definitely uh, ne- never understood that one. But, uh, yeah, most, most, you know, a lot, half half the teams in the league share the stadium with the, with the hockey mm-hmm. team as well. And it definitely helps for marketing too, so. Yeah. I mean, you know, there are exceptions. We, we know that um, both uh, Jersey and uh, the Islanders have their own buildings, but they're, they're in a metropolitan area of 20-some million people. So, you know, you can get away with it in that regard. But uh, it's going to be tough. Uh, it'll be interesting, but it's going to be tough, uh, as we yeah, see. Well, even, you know, you know even, even then, the the Rangers and the Knicks share an arena. So yeah, was, mm-hmm. even even in a city like that, you know, they still found it, it was it was a better decision, and it really is because obviously, you know, it's Madison mm-hmm. Square Garden. But yeah, well, we got the the early uh, games out for uh, for the playoffs and. Um, we spoke of the Islanders, and the Islanders will be at Carolina on Saturday. Uh, that's a 5 p.m. puck drop on TBS, True TV. It'll stream on Max. Then the night cap of the doubleheader is Toronto in Boston. Again, this one's an 8 p.m. puck drop, TBS, True TV, and Max. So that's your <coughs> Saturday game. Your Sunday games, they don't leave the state of Florida. Tampa Bay is in the, uh, in the Miami area uh, to face Florida. That's a 12:30 puck drop on ESPN. And then uh, the the afternoon affair, the late mid afternoon affair uh, on ESPN at three o'clock drop is uh, at the the world's most famous arena, as they like to call it, Madison Square Garden, as the Rangers host the Capitals in what seemingly happens every year. The Rangers and the Capitals seem to always play each other, either in the first or the second round of the playoffs. And, uh, you know, it happens again this time. Uh, they will be on hand um, in that uh, in the world's most famous arena, at least from their standpoint, Rangers and Capitals. Um, three o'clock puck drop on that one, and then from that point on, we don't know what's going to happen. We'll uh, we'll find out probably tomorrow where the rest of uh, the playoffs uh, go from that standpoint. Yeah, and you know it's fun. It's funny you say that that it feels like uh, we we get that every year, and I think that's part of the reason that so many people are complaining about the the divisional system in the NHL mm-hmm. right now. And I know there was this big. Uh, there was this big thing a week ago about how they were considering, you know, should we go back to the top eight in the East and top eight in the West make the uh, playoffs? Because mm-hmm. with the format you have now, you, you're getting in a situation. Look at the look at the strength of some of the divisions, right? The the Carolina mm-hmm. Hurricanes have 111 points and the Rangers have 114. Those are the two best teams in the Eastern Conference. Right. But instead, the Hurricanes are getting, you know essentially what is a tougher matchup with the third seed it may have not worked out that way right mm-hmm. but but let's say that was a stronger team in that spot like look at the western conference and i think a, a big part is the race we had in, in the western conference you know there's a, there or mm-hmm. even in the eastern conference right so uh w- with getting into the wild card you know the red wings they, their only hope was getting into the wild card spot mm-hmm. whereas some of these other teams like the penguins the islanders uh the, the Capitals in that last week, they were all fighting for mm-hmm. wild card and the third spot in the division. So it, it's definitely, you, you'll you get, it may not have happened this year, but you'll get to scenarios where, where you get teams that get left out with maybe more points because they're mm-hmm. in a strong division and things like that. And um, again, you get these matchups where, you know, every year we got to see, we could talk about how the, how the Leafs never get out of the first round of the playoffs. They have to play the Bruins again this season. Right. right? And then, it's like we see the Leafs play the Lightning or the Bruins every year in the first round. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it gets boring after a while, right? You, you don't get – if you go back to the 1v8 system, 
you mm-hmm. get those scenarios where you would get different matchups because it, it's not based on your division. But the way the divisional format works in the NHL, you're basically handicapping these teams no matter what, unless the you know you get the wild screen, unless you finish first in your division, really. But you have to take someone out in your division because a lot of time the wild card team you you even play is from the same division. So mm-hmm. I just think it's ridiculous. Um, but you know the NHL does doesn't have a great commissioner, so it doesn't shock me that things like these happen. It's amazing. I went through and took a quick look, and the you know the Capitals I mentioned yesterday um, have made the playoffs sixteen out of the last eighteen years, fourteen. Out of those 14 out of those 16 years, they played the Islander. I'm sorry, the Rangers in one, you know, either either in the first or the second, um, you know, uh, in the first or the second uh, series in the in the playoffs. So, you know, it's like they it's like when when they make the playoffs, when the Rangers make the playoffs or the Capitals but make the playoffs, they know that they're going to end up playing each other. Yeah, and, and a big reason is because they're in the same division and, and just the yeah. way the NHL designed, they're handicapped by the system, the format. Right, and the fans, you know, it's like, okay, well, we know each other. <laughs> you know, by this time, it's, you know, the fans in the buildings know each other. Yeah, and then and then you, you, you could even get these situations, right? Like we talked about the Bruins, for example. They were in contention to get the president's trophy and they really right. dropped the ball this last week. Mm-hmm. And we kind of talked about how, you know, maybe they didn't want to win the president's right. trophy because they won it last year and they got cursed. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Maybe even fueling that was knowing, Hey, if we start throwing some games in this last week, not only will we make sure we don't get the president's trophy, let the Panthers get that this mm-hmm. year or someone else, obviously it was the Rangers, but they also look at it like, hey, the Leafs are locked into third place. They can't move up mm-hmm. or down. If we throw some games and end up in second, we know we own their ass. So let's right. take the Leafs in the first round, right? So you get mm-hmm. these scenarios where maybe the team wanted the more favorable matchup because they know they own a mm-hmm. division rival. And that's why I just – this is why I just think the NHL is a stupid league in general. Well, and, and I don't think that – I don't think that Tampa Bay and, and, and the Panthers – are excited about playing each other in the first round. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, again, you get the Florida rivalry, like, okay, but they <laughs> see each other enough during the season. Like, the last right. thing they want to see each other again in, in the first round of the playoffs. And then that's the thing. You'll never get those – you'll never get those more interesting matchups, right? Like, we're, we're never mm-hmm. going to see the uh, – with, with the 1v8 system, you would maybe get – you know, the, the Hurricanes and the Bruins in the first round sure. or something like that. You'll never get that in the first round with this system. No, no. It's 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 a mess. Well, we uh, we know who's playing on Friday night um, in the NBA, and that's Chicago, and they're taking on Miami. Uh, that game is a on ESPN. It is a 7 o'clock tip-off, and then uh, – at 9.30, it's Sacramento and New Orleans. That is what's coming up on your Friday card in the NBA. Now, the Eastern Conference will start on Sunday. That's the uh, the Boston, you know, will we'll play their first game Sunday. That's going to be at 1 o'clock on ABC. Meanwhile, New York and Philadelphia get their seasons, is their series, I'm sorry, started on Saturday, uh, if that's a two-seven matchup, the Knicks and you know the Knicks will be hosting uh, the 76ers, and that's a six o'clock start on ESPN for that game. Meanwhile, on Sunday, Milwaukee and Indiana face off. That's a seven p.m. tip on TNT. Cleveland and Orlando is a Saturday tip. That's a one o'clock on ESPN. And then over on the Western Conference, Oklahoma City, you know, they're in the same boat. They're going to have to wait and find out who they're going to play. That will happen at 9.30 on Sunday on uh, TNT and streaming on Max. Uh, Denver and the Lakers, that's the 2-7 matchup, is Saturday. That's 8.30 on ABC, so that'll be uh, a game in primetime 
on ABC. Minnesota, that's a 3-6 against Phoenix. That game will be played uh, on Saturday at 3.30 on ESPN. The Clips in Dallas, that's 4-5. That's the Mavs and the Clips. That's a Sunday game, 3.30 afternoon um, game on ABC. So there you go. That's where your chance to find all of those uh, games and where they're going to be. Uh, coming up this weekend, there's a lot of NBA action, and there's uh, enough uh, NHL action to keep you going. Yeah, you know, one one matchup that stands out to me there is the uh, the 76ers-Knicks one. If I told uh-huh. you the 76ers and the Knicks were playing in the first round of the playoffs, what would you think the seeding is on that game? It wouldn't be 2-7, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it maybe be, two for the Sixers. <laughs> right, it would, yeah. Yeah. It, it might be two seven uh, other way around. You're right. It might be. Um, I might even in other years it might be Philadelphia one eight in that uh, situation. Yeah, and and it's uh, it, it's just interesting to me because obviously you know the great on the Knicks they they really earned it. They pushed at the end there to get that second seed, so they definitely you know deserve the second seed, especially the way they turned the season around at the trade deadline. They they really. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they, they really brought in a haul and, and improved their team. But it, it's funny to me just because the 76ers, so it's, it's no shade on the Knicks. They deserve the second seed. But the 76ers yeah. could be a second seed themselves because, yeah. you know, obviously we know the story with them. They were in the third seed when Embiid got injured and they dropped all the way into, into the play-in tournament. Yeah. But if he had stayed healthy, I just – I wonder who the, the real second seed. This might not even be – a matchup in the first round of the playoffs at all. So uh, I just very interesting matchup. I think it's funny because, you know, we talked about the Rangers coming out of this uh, with the number one seed and now the Knicks same building Madison square garden. Uh, they're going to be sharing, but they're going to be sharing in uh, as favorites, which is not normal for the New York teams in either hockey or basketball. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting for them. You know, both both are going to get home advantage, and if they go deep into the playoffs, they're both going to get home advantage pretty deep, unless the Knicks run into the Celtics early. You know, the, the joke was that um, they hoped the Yankees could hold on to first place through the entire weekend, just so they would have three, uh, you know, three teams in first place uh, as the. Uh, as they head into the uh, into the weekend, so well we'll see about that. But uh, no, New York, Philadelphia, that's a good matchup. Uh, Milwaukee, Indiana should be a good um, you know three six matchup. Yeah, definitely. The Bucks they they slipped down late there. Obviously, they were the number two seed for most of the season, and uh, we'll have to check on Giannis because I know he missed the last few games, but I'm sure he'll be ready to go for this series. It's it's an interesting one because. The Pacers, um, the Pacers are a very high-scoring team. Obviously, they made some moves, picked up Siakam at, at the trade deadline, and and they really improved their team as well. But they were one of those teams coming into the season where they were averaging 150 points scored per game to start the year. Every every game was going over. I think their third, their first like 13 straight went over or something like that. So uh, they they played a fast pace, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, this you know this Doc Rivers style defense that mm-hmm. the, the team seems to take on in some games and others just completely like ignores the defensive game plan. So. We'll have to see which Milwaukee shows up. Obviously, it's it's a division rivalry here, them being in the same division, so they play each other often. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, Indiana, the Pacers might be uh, talking to the Fever, asking if uh, Caitlin Clark could uh, make the uh, you know, make the postseason roster for the Pacers um, to give them some more outside shooting. Uh, that four or five matchup between Cleveland and Orlando is flying way under the radar. I mean, that that's, you hardly even hear that ever being mentioned. Yeah. Orlando, you know, that was a team we talked about early in the year yeah. before the Christmas break. I talked about how I, I thought mm-hmm. the, uh, the Orlando magic or the Oklahoma city of last year, we saw, we saw yeah. the thunder kind of squeak into the play in tournament mm-hmm. last year. They, they didn't really, 
you know, do well. But that was, you know, that was after a season where they finished under 500 and barely won any games. So mm-hmm. they, they were one of the worst teams in the year before. So we saw the improvement with the Thunder. I pegged the Magic to be this team. And, you know, same scenario here. I didn't think they were going to get as high as they did, a, a fifth seed. They were even, I think, in contention for, like, the third seed going into that, that last game of the season. So definitely good on the Magic. They've shocked me. But uh, they haven't been a very good road team this year. And I expect Cleveland to get through. Obviously, Cleveland hasn't played well lately, but they've also been missing Donovan Mitchell for uh, a, a decent amount of games. So he he just started to come back in that last week. So mm-hmm. I expect Cleveland to, to get by. But I, I totally agree. It'll be a it'll be a very interesting matchup here. The Magic are a uh, young team, and like I said, I think they're the the Thunder of last year. The th- so who knows? Maybe the Magic are the number one seed next year. <laughs> You never know. Um, but, you know, again, Cleveland and, and Orlando, it's a battle of two young teams. And sometimes you never know what goes with that. I mean, you know, they could they could get hot and suddenly, you know, come streaking out of that that 4-5 position and, and um, you know, and, and cause a lot of people some uh, serious grief. Uh, real quick, we can, uh, if you got a second, we'll go uh, just at least over Saturday's schedule in the MLS. We got Atlanta, Cincinnati, Columbus, Portland, Miami, Nashville. Seems like they play every other week. Uh, Montreal and Orlando, New York City and DC, Toronto and New England, Cleveland and Salt Lake, Houston and Austin. Kansas City and St. Louis, Colorado, Dallas, LAFC, and the Red Bull. And uh, Saturday's last game uh, is a rivalry game, Seattle in Vancouver. So there you go. That's uh, Any of those uh, games pique your fancy from a standpoint of uh, should be decent games? Oh, yeah, definitely uh, all of those. By the way, I'm disappointed, you know, all the games start at 730 yeah, tisk 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 MLS, but uh, yeah, the, definitely you know, we got some good games for sure. Atlanta and Cincinnati is going to be a good one. Cincinnati, obviously, you know, what, what, the best team in the MLS last year in the regular season, and uh, this Atlanta team—they're coming off a, a a win against Philadelphia at home, who's, who's been pretty good this year. So Atlanta, you know, they're they're no pushover at home, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Columbus and Portland is an interesting one to me. Obviously, Columbus, the uh, defending MLS Cup champions, but Portland's been a bit of a nasty team to start the season. They can score. Uh, Miami and Nashville, they just faced each other in the CONCACAF Champions Cup uh, a few weeks ago, I believe, and Miami kicked Nashville out before getting kicked out themselves to to Monterey. So that'll be uh, an interesting one. Nashville is probably going to come with – uh, with a little extra in that match. So definitely some good matchups here to uh, uh, to tip off your night here with uh, with the MLS on the weekend, obviously. You know, just still disappointed that they're all those are at seven because that's, you know, yeah. perfect games to be staggering in the afternoon. Then you got New, New York City and D.C. United playing at City Field, which is the home of the Mets. Um I'm not sure the sight lines would be very attractive in that ballpark, but uh, we'll have to see. I mean, baseball stadiums are not normally a good place to watch soccer. Yeah. But we shall see. And uh, Chicago and Salt Lake. Where was the one I was looking for? Oh, there it is. Seattle, Vancouver, uh, they always play each other well. I mean, it doesn't matter whether they're good or bad, either team. They always seem to, to you know, that's that's a rivalry that goes all the way back to the NASL. So uh, it's always fun for Seattle and Vancouver to get together. And the same goes in, in hockey. They uh, they really like to, uh, to play each other. Yeah, definitely a rivalry matchup there. Uh, that that's going to be a good one too. Vancouver just lost three one at home to the Galaxy, but uh, the, Vancouver is still one of the best teams in the Western Conference right now. Seattle was supposed to be, you know, one of the favorites to win the Western Conference. So mm-hmm. we'll see. That should be a matchup between two very good teams in the West. If you know Seattle can start putting some 
some wins together. That's always a good thing. Uh, the Sunday games um, are Charlotte and Minnesota. That game will be played in Charlotte. And uh, L.A. taken on San Jose. And that game will be played uh, over at, uh, you know, at San Jose. So uh, interesting, interesting. Uh, actually, no, I apologize. It's, uh, they're playing at L.A. So the first game is a six o'clock game. So you're gonna you get a doubleheader, night doubleheader here uh, on on these games. Um, Charlotte plays the six o'clock game, and then follow that at eight fifteen. They staggered it for L.A. San Jose. So yeah, well, you know, that's that one good. was done right you know, from that standpoint. So there you go. All right, everybody. Um, Amadeus, why don't you tell us what's going on with um, your picks and how to uh, find them right there in the show box below and uh, all the fun stuff that they might be able to find. Yeah, make sure you check out my premium picks at BigAl.com, PickAdvisor.com, and TheInsidersRoom.com. The links are in the description below. Uh, you can get my Europa League game of the month that kicks off at 3 o'clock as well as uh, uh, a Brazilian soccer play I have up. That's my action on the pitch, and then all my baseball is really has uh, started already. So it's a uh, it's, it's a light day. There's not there's not a ton of sports. Obviously, no no basketball. It's a meaningless day in the NHL, and even even the baseball card was light. So make sure you go check out the action on the pitch for tonight. Well, I was looking for um, either you know Korean baseball or um, was it Russian ping pong that uh, back in the day there, baby. Went to on that one. Oh yeah, the, the good old table tennis. Those, those games can get wild sometimes. Yeah, that's funny. Um, all right, just looking real quick to see, um, to see anything else coming. Um, nope, I was just checking to see if there's any headlines. There aren't even headlines of of major import uh, in that, uh, you know, in what's going on uh, these days. Um, and, uh, well, Dwight Freeney says that Tom Brady was one of the toughest NFL quarterbacks to sack in, uh, you know, in his career. Well, that's nice to know. We all know that Tom gets rid of the ball probably faster than any quarterback in the, you know, in NFL history. So maybe that's what helped. But, um, anyway, all right. No other headlines. Anybody else? Any questions from the? from the audience out there quickly going once going twice all right put your pencils down everybody and we will see you again very very soon have a lovely lovely wednesday uh, thursday let me try to get this straight and tomorrow we'll talk about what's going to be on tv for the weekend and boy is it going to be jam-packed take care everybody be well <laughs>